Chaya Melsindberg, a group leader at the Translational Research Unit at the Norwegian Radium Hospital, Oslo University Hospital. Um, it's the Department of Cellular Therapies. We do mainly translational research. Mm. And so I'm here, Lord. So I'm a research scientist in Elsmar and Slab, and I'm responsible for the ink side and for the development of uh, new protocols uh, attached to it. Uh, well, I started uh, out as a biochemist with uh, doing a bachelor in the UK, and then uh, I've been a pure immunologist since then. Uh, and I have a French master's degree in immunology and then a PhD in tumor immunology from Oslo. And then I've been a group leader for the last seven years at the Department of Cellular Therapy. I have a formation, initial formation, so master and engineer degree in biotechnology. And then I moved on to a PhD and a postdoc in uh, biophysics and uh, immunology. And then uh, I joined uh, a smart group as a research scientist for the past four years. The, the main focus of, of our lab, we, we're basically two research groups in this lab. So uh, we are doing CAR T cell therapy development, T cell receptor therapy development and immune monitoring of clinical trials. And it's all immunotherapy in cancer. Uh, so we've developed over the past few years uh, chimeric antigen receptors from an antibody collection uh, that was belonging to the hospital uh, and then we fish out T-cell receptors from patients that have received immunotherapy, uh, mainly cancer vaccines, uh, and have done exceptionally well. So we clone those T-cells -cell, T and identify the TCR. Here's our hospital site in the background uh, with the Department of Cellular Therapy and its production facilities as well as our translational research unit uh, that is based over at the Oslo Cancer Cluster, which is seen here. So, um, so I'm here with Pierre and we'll talk about the high throughput live imaging uh, that we're performing in the preclinical development of uh, our adoptive cell therapies. So this is uh, to present our department. We're one of Europe's largest and most modern academic GMP facilities with seven clean rooms. Uh, we're running around 10 clinical trials, which are both academic and industry sponsored. Uh, so we have a QC facility and then we have the different uh, clean rooms with a, which are separate ones for production of patient products. And at the Translational Research Unit, uh, we have two groups working closely together for the development of uh, chimeric antigen receptors of CARS and T cell receptor TCR therapy. And then doing the immune monitoring in clinical trials where we receive patient samples and look at the immune responses in those. So there are two group leaders, Sebastian Merschley, who's the PI on the CAR development, and myself, who's the uh, PI on the T cell receptor development and our main aim is to develop efficient cellular therapies for solid cancer. So for CAR-T development, uh, uh, many are familiar with the design of these. They are, consist of a targeting domain uh, from, uh, derived from an antibody, so it's a single chain variable fragment connected to a transmembrane domain through a space or, or a hinge. And then uh, we have a co-stimulatory signaling domain and the CD3 Zeta uh, signaling domain uh, from the T cell receptor complex. And for the therapy, uh, blood is normally collected from patients. T cells are isolated and activated before they're modified the, through viral transduction to express uh, CAR or in some cases uh, TCR, and then they're expanded ex vivo, and you have a product formulation, uh, and then they're infused into a preconditioned patient. So CAR T therapy has mainly been used in hematological malignancy so far, and the first FDA approval of CAR T therapy was in 2017. 
Uh, and it's had great success with uh, CD19 targeting in B cell malignancies. So we have tested this previously. Uh, there's a couple of publications on that uh, for B cell lymphoma or uh, leukemia. And we now want to expand the use of CAR T to solid tumors, uh, like a lot of other research groups. Uh, so we've started looking at osteosarcoma and ovarian cancer. Uh, and some of the main challenges with this is the tumor microenvironment and also with CAR T's uh, because they're recognized surface antigens on cancer. Uh, there are not that many tumor specific antigens to target. But in the tumor microenvironment, some of the main challenges are, uh, for example, nitration of chemokines that block T cells trafficking to the tumor. Uh, you also have tumor vasculature uh, that can preferentially recruit other types of immune cells and not necessarily the uh, T cells or NK cells that can kill the tumor. Uh, tumors upregulate expression of ligands for checkpoint uh, molecules, and you have hypoxia. And you also have uh, you have metabolites uh, that are deprived in the tumor microenvironment and the skewing of the T cells that are specific towards T regulatory cells or others that are immunosuppressive. In addition, uh, you have macrophages that can be reprogrammed to be immunosuppressive and block T cells. Uh, and you have the stroma and uh, cancer associated fibroblasts that can trap T cells in, in the stroma and they do not go into the tumor. So T cell receptor therapy is uh, the use of uh, transgenic T cell receptors rather than the CAR uh, molecules uh, to target the tumor is really lagging far behind the CAR field uh, in clinical trials. So this is the number from 2018, so it's, it's up and coming, but it's um, there is no improved therapy. So this can the, recognize both intracellular and extracellular molecules. So there are uh, a lot more targets in the tumor to uh, look at, but they are uh, MHC or HLA dependent. So that's a disadvantage. So this slide summarizes some of the differences between TCL therapy and CAR therapy. Um, and because mainly of the targets that we have for T cell receptors, we think that these may be the best option for solid tumor in a lot of cases. So we've worked with new antigens in microsatellite in stable colon cancer. And this is a frame shift mutated antigen presented on MHC class one. Uh, and we've also worked with the universal antigen that uh, Pierre has uh, worked a lot with. Uh, called telomerase. It's overexpressed and this is presented on the MHC class 2 in our case. And again, some of the main challenges are the tumor microenvironment. Uh, and this is where the incusite can help us get some insight into some of those things. Uh, and also, we have a uh, possibility of loss of antigen presentation on MHC molecules uh, for TCR therapy. So really the research aims in particularly related to this that we have is uh, that we need to demonstrate preclinical efficacy and safety of our modified uh, immune cells before they can be tested clinically as we're a translational lab. And the incusite has really been an ideal addition to testing uh, the efficacy of in vitro killing by CAR or T cell modified T cells or NK cells. Uh, as it has a uh, high throughput and it also visualizes the killing, which is important for a lot of uh, people. So I'll pass you to Pierre, yeah. we'll go into the technical details. So, yeah, what I'm going to talk about is a bit how we tailor the incusite to or need uh, in terms of uh, preclinical validation process. So this is our standard workflow. So as Elsmart said, we are working mainly on adoptive cell therapy, so CAR T cells or TCR redirected T cells. And the initial step that we have is a classical in vitro validation. So it can uh, range from uh, functional assay, cytokine prediction assay, to immune cell killing assays. And so incusite in our hands has been particularly important in uh, classical immune cell killing assays. 
But this is not something that I would put really the emphasis on today because this is uh, something that is extremely classical. And I will talk more about the recent development we have done uh, in the field of uh, 3D uh, tumor tissues uh, validation. So in the, our preclinical validation workflow, in vivo uh, experimentations are crucial and required by actually uh, authorities before we are able to move into treating real patients. Uh, so the main issue with in vivo experimentation is that it's time consuming and expensive. So we designed and added an additional layer between our classical in vitro validation and our in vivo validation uh, steps in order to be able to uh, decipher better which therapies uh, hold the most promises and which one can go on in the development. And so this has been done by developing uh, spherids uh, validation process. So one key aspect of in, uh, Incusite in our hands is its versatility. So we have been able to uh, adapt Incusite to a various uh, number of uh, protocols and in the field or more specifically for spherids, we have been able to use different protocols to change the physical constraint, the chemical or protein coating, or even to recreate partially the tumor microenvironment. And all of these important parameters can be uh, still uh, give a high uh, number of, uh, of uh, quantitative results at the end. So we can vary a lot of different conditions within one plate. And that is actually something that speed up a lot our preclinical validation process. So I'm going to show you a couple of examples of what we have done in the field of adoptive cell therapy with uh, the Incusite. So the first one that I'm going to talk about is classical TCA redirected T cell killing. So we are using a, a colorectal cell line that we are plating onto a matrix, and they are going to form spontaneously multiple spherids. And after uh, five days, we are going to uh, include or, or to add our uh, TCA redirected T cells. And as you can see, they are going to gather around the tumor cells, and they are going to uh, promote their apoptosis. A bit more on this is or uh, the development that we have done in TCR uh, redirected NK cell killing. So this is a project that was initiated a couple of years ago. So the idea is to use uh, NK92, which is a cell line that is, has been shown to have some anti-tumor efficacy. And we have been able to transduce this NK92 using a polycystronic CD3 and a TCR. So we are able to transform our NK92 into TCR NK92. So these TCR and NK92 are able to specifically uh, recognize peptide loaded on MHC in a similar fashion as T cells. Actually, a good part of our paper on this subject was to demonstrate that on a lot of different aspects, TCR and NK92 behave exactly like T cells. And so one advantage of this uh, type of therapy is that it's a truly off-the-shelf therapy. Because as Elsmarit mentioned, for example, for CAR therapy, you need a lot of steps uh, in order to get the lymphocyte from the patient, transduce them, activate them before you feed them back. The goal of our project and of, of this type of therapy is to uh, have something that you can expand indefinitely, uh, transduce very easily and very efficiently and store into uh, the freezer and just uh, tow it when the patient needs it. So it's something that is truly on the shelf. And so what we are able, what we have been able to measure and see uh, in the Incusat is that TCR and NK92 behave exactly in the same uh, fashion as uh, radio, TCR redirected T cells when it comes to interact with spherids. So it was really amazing to see how we can uh, adapt Incusat to our uh, preclinical validation in the in the respect of TCR and NK92. So a bit more about CAR therapy. So. We have actually uh, published in, uh, two years ago a technical paper on how to adapt uh, spherids to the validation of CAR therapy. And so this follows more or less what I've shown before. So we have spherids uh, that are going to get killed specifically by CAR. But what I want to show more specifically with these uh, movies or with this, uh, with this uh, type of um, of uh, experiments is that uh, Incusite can be used 
for different types of effector cells. And those effector cells usually behave differently in terms of, kinetic, of killing kinetic or general behavior. And this is still something that we are able to pick up very easily with the incusite. So we can adapt it really to the type of effector cells that we are uh, trying to uh, study. And so we have shown in this publication how we can adapt the incusite or high imaging, high live, uh, high imaging high throughput, sorry, live imaging uh, machines to hardcore uh, therapy uh, development. Nowadays, we are actually working on how to develop more complex 3D structures. So I presented you like a couple of examples of, of spherids, but we have recently published another technical paper on how to uh, use cysts uh, in the incusite. So cysts are formed by a colorectal cell line that is forming a ring of uh, epithelial cells that are surrounding a lumen that is filled with liquid. So it looks a bit like it, it recreates to a certain extent uh, an intestine. And so these cells in order to form such structures need to be embedded in a complex matrix of protein. And we were able to see that the complexity of the different protein of the matrix that we had to add in order to form this cyst was perfectly uh, compatible with the incusite. And with using the incusite, we were able to show that the T cell that you are depositing on top of the matrix were actually able to extravadate through the matrix and you were able to follow them uh, to a certain extent, reach the cyst and were able to destroy them specifically. So in this aspect, we were able to change the completely the protein coating and adapt it to our needs and uh, incusite uh, was able to deliver uh, very efficiently. There is uh, something else that I want to talk about is a bit uh, what we have done uh, on anti-tumor chemicals. So we're working on anti-tumor chemicals that can be used either uh, by themselves or in combination with our adaptive cell therapy. And why I want to mention it is that as we are able and we are working mainly on 96 well plates, you can vary, uh, you can have a lot of different conditions uh, in your experiments. So you can vary the concentration, for example, of two chemicals and study how they interact together and um, like harness different uh, parameters that will permit uh, to evaluate them into a pharmacokinetic model. So they, for example, we have like two chemicals with different concentration and we are measuring here the growth of the spheroids, but we can also measure, of course, the apoptosis. And with this, we are able to uh, uh, calculate the combination index that is represented in this graph here. And this combination index will permit to uh, evaluate what is the precise, what the best uh, quantities for the, the two chemicals to give the best uh, response at the lowest possible dose. And so finally, uh, we, this is also something that we are developing is to move away from the study of large structures on long-term experiments, but more to work on uh, at the single cell level at a high uh, spatial and time resolution. So for example, here we have uh, uh, nosteosarcoma cells that is that has been plated and that has been uh, that is interacted with uh, several uh, type that has been uh, in contact with uh, several lymphocytes and upon contact with the lymphocyte it's going to get destroyed. So once again what is interesting here is the true versatility of the machine. We are able to use it for up to 10 to 20 days for certain application or to use it for during one day and take one picture every five minutes so that we are able to truly adapt it to our need in terms of uh, spatial and time resolution. So this is just a summary of what we are using the Incusite and what are for us the best advantage of this machine uh, within our, uh, our lab. So it's a very versatile system that is allowing for high throughput and flexible uh, imaging, both in terms of uh, schedules and protocols. And we are using it mainly to evaluate the efficacy of TCR and car redirected T cells. And we can adapt it, and that's what actually is now becoming more main focus, is how to use it uh, for the evaluation of or the efficacy of our effector cells against large uh, tumor structures, such as ferrets and cysts. And I would finish by saying that our new area that we are interested in uh, nowadays is to add other layers in terms of uh, complexity for organoids. So add different type of accessory cells to truly recreate the tumor microenvironment. 
but also one critical step in our preclinical validation process, which is the evaluation of safety, toxicity of our effector cells. And so we are hoping that we'll be able to use the Incusite to be uh, able to evaluate the safe, the toxicity of our effector cells against different uh, tissue types, such for example, like you know, lung, liver, heart, and so on. And I'll just finish by showing like a couple of publications that we have done uh, using the Incusites and uh, Spherid. And so two of them, so this one and this one, were actually technical paper on how you can adapt the uh, Incusite or any or high throughput live imaging uh, machines to uh, the preclinical development of uh, CAR therapy. I think to, it's really in the last two years that we've been using the Incusite and it's really become an important yeah. addition. We didn't actually imagine that we'd be able to use it for such different assays in yeah. the beginning. But it's, um, it's adapting well with the development of methods, so that's great. And we're like constantly adding new protocols and thinking about new things that we can do with it. Probably go for high throughput. Yes. Yeah, I, I high throughput. So. But the fact that you can do several different protocols at the same time is obviously also important yeah. with respect to the high throughput because uh, otherwise it would take us much longer. But the, I think the greatest advantage compared to other techniques yeah. used is the high throughput. Yeah, and like, you know, it's uh, like in this respect, the it's also very advantageous that you don't have to come back during your experiment. Other of, we, we have other type of protocols where we have to measure manually at several time points the evolution of our experiment, which is not the case for Incusite. We can just set up the plate and leave it uh, alone for a couple of days and come back to our answer results. So this is also something that is extremely uh, time saving. So this was a project, I think, originally started maybe in 2014. Uh, we moved a bit slowly in the beginning. Uh, and this is where, uh, as Pierre explained, we're using, we were using an NK cell line uh, to start with and making it express T cell receptors. So uh, in the publication uh, that Pierre co-authored as a first author with uh, another postdoc in the lab, Nadia Mansali, they actually showed that these NK cells could be more or less turned into T cells, that we could target the NK cells to the tumor specifically. Uh, so this has now been licensed to accompany the technology. Uh, they will probably not use this NK cell line that we used initially, uh, but it can also be adapted to primary NK cells from different sources. And I think they're hoping to put this into the clinic you know, to test it in about two years' time. But there was another group that published something similar uh, a, bit a bit later, yes. So we're not the only ones that have talked about that. Obviously, having an allogeneic source of cells for T cell, not necessarily T cell therapy, but adoptive cell therapy would be an advantage because making an autologous product for each patient is extremely demanding. Uh, so it, it was an effort of finding a source of cells that could be used in more cases and actually biobanked. But it was extremely important to show that these cells could kill in a specific manner and could also kill a more 3D structure like spheroids, which was what was done in their paper. Uh, and for this, the, again, the incusite was um, an important addition to some of the other methods we, we had. So I think it was one of the first. Yeah, know, actually, seven, it was the first uh, first paper and first uh, experiment that we did was in the frame of these uh, redirected NK cells. I think we'll, we'll uh, definitely stay with cancer immunotherapy as uh, it's uh, we're doing. Uh, 
the whole process from we actually have everything in house to to develop new therapies and we're doing the preclinical validation and then the translation uh, so to branch into other areas of research apart from cancer immunotherapy would probably be a little bit too demanding for us but there are several technical aspects and like Pierre also explained we could we use the exact technology to look at uh, safety of our products and toxicity uh, and I think it's a great way of actually visualizing that uh, healthy tissues are more intact using the incusite so we've done that now with bone marrow cells or blood cells using more classical techniques and we're hoping to move that also into the uh, incusite system.